Happy Friday, folks. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got three people for the devotion oh, this yeah. morning, right? And there, we a little static electricity going on here. All right, just wait till winter time. You'll be sticking st straight up in the air. <laughs> we're in Luke chapter 2, and we're going to be starting in verse 21, Luke chapter 2, 21 to the end of the chapter. And uh, so Jesse, my son-in-law here, he's going to kick us off with the reading. Sounds good. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time of the purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Thank you, Cooper. <laughs> Uh, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. He had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had, been, not, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents, when the parents brought him, brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, <laughs> "Cooper, don't wait. That's all right. <laughs> Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, <laughs> you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people." A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage <laughs> and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the, re the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. We continue on in verse 41 as Cooper is getting the toys out. All right. Verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every uh, year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among the relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And uh, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for this day, the beautiful day you blessed us with. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for little children. And even as we talk about the, the life of Jesus as a tiny baby and as a young person, a preteen, we, we're thankful for that we have children around right now, Lord God, to remind us that you are the creator, you're the giver of life, and we're thankful for their energy and excitement they bring to our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. So, all right, so let's kick into this here. The way the sun is really bright here. You, you get a little shade here. I'm just I'm like, I'm, I'm getting uh, lasered by the sun. 
I'm getting lasered by the sun here, Cooper. And there. All right. So, uh, as we kind of look through through this, um, I like one of the things that stuck stuck out at me is with the presentation in the temple that um, Mary and Joseph. Again, we see that they didn't have not have much money. They had they had to have uh, their sacrifice that they gave was just measly kind of sacrifice, um, just a couple of pigeons uh, and so forth that they they gave for um, that was required, and that was um, that was done by them. And then, but also I think in the presentation of the temple um, that you see these devout people, Simeon and Anna just praising and worshiping God uh, in there. So I don't know if you're like, uh, have you ever had to wait for an answer from God for, for longer than you thought that the answer should take? Yeah, I would say that's definitely happened yeah. and, a few uh, times in my life. <laughs> and how do, how do you deal with that when that, that goes on? I think, I mean, as they were doing, even today, we're waiting in hopeful expectation, right? We don't, we don't know the plans. Right. Um, God has it all laid out for us, and um, just a reminder to ourselves that we're not in control. Mm -hmm. And every day we have to, I think, rejuvenate ourselves to remind ourselves that <laughs> it's a waiting game, but we can wait in. I guess, hopeful expectation that he's going to fulfill what he promised he would. What is it coming back? Yeah, like we don't know the, the time of his return. Yeah. We're waiting for the... Con they were waiting for the consolation of Israel. We're waiting for the consolation of the world, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. the, the final consummation of God's kingdom. Jesus is the king of the universe, and yeah. he will return someday. But I'm struck by, like, Anna, day and night, she's praying in the temple. And I'm not quite there, <laughs> I would say. I think part of me wrestles with, okay, is that a productive Christian? You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. Could you be going out and going to make disciples and, you know, feeding, clothing the poor? Is it, you know, because I think of today, like monks who yeah. just sit in their, um, what do you call them? Monasteries? Yeah. Or, and I don't know truly if that is what we're called to do. So I kind of, you know, liken this to that. And I'm sure she had incredible faith. And maybe she was called to do, to do that, that, right? right. Like we're, we're all called to different gifts and different, you know, careers and, and whatnot to be using our talents for the Lord. And maybe this was her. And yet, you're calling. We need those people. And yet, you know, like, and I and I agree with you, because I would be like more like, well, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Am I right. being productive? But um, also, I kind of think of in terms of uh, there is power in prayer, mm -hmm. and is my prayer life that focused? Right. And I would say it's not, and yeah. you know, to that to that level. But also the other thing I think I can take away from this is sometimes I'm visiting somebody who's elderly, who maybe is in a nursing home, they're infirm, they can't produce mm -hmm. in, anymore as, as far as like what the world would say produce, right. but they can still be in prayer for other people. I remember an older lady from our congregation who quietly would just kind of pray for people around their birthday, maybe send them an encouraging note once in a while. And that was what she did. That was what, that's what, what she could do at yeah. that stage in her life. So yeah. uh, I think there's power, there's power in that too. Um, and but, she was older, right? So she is, yeah, yeah right. She is 84, uh, 84 so. or so years old. So she's older yeah. and she's doing that. I don't know if she spent her whole life. Uh, well, actually from the time she was a widow, I guess it says in there yeah. so then uh, you know then Simeon um, is waiting for the consolation of Israel and he takes Jesus up in his arms now I don't know if you came in like a stranger like your son, son's eight days old and somebody's just like 
Simba. <laughs> Simba, right. Yeah. Takes him in the arm and starts prophesying. I think that would kind of freak you out a little bit, I, maybe. Yeah. And there. I guess Mary knew, though, from the yeah. get-go. They both knew. Yeah. So. But in his prophecy, he's talking about great things are going to happen. Now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, verse 29, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles for your glory of your people Israel. All great stuff. Mm-hmm. You're like, man, this is great. He's done it. He's seen it all. And then he says, behold, this, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Also. Mm. He's saying that to Mary. That's a hard thing to hear. Yeah. And there. So Jesus remains a stumbling block. He was a stumbling block, and he remains a stumbling block. He's for the rising and falling of many. At the, the Jesus is the inflection point of history, right? He's the either uh, somebody will bend their knee willingly to Jesus now, or they will be forced to bend their knee when he returns mm-hmm. again. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess but for the rising and falling of many. I don't know, is there anything else from that that you wanted to comment on? No, not from that first section. All right. So then he goes back to, they return to Nazareth, and he's growing, became strong, filled with wisdom, verse 40, and favor favor of God was upon him. Um, And so every year they go to the, the Passover with extended family. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure, like, when you were growing up, did you kind of hang out with your cousins when the whole group was got together and, uh, you know, you're off doing your own thing, maybe playing some games or something like that, and and then it was, they expected you, I remember when I was growing up, we'd get out with our friends doing stuff, and, and mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you would just kind of show up when you got hungry again for dinner or something like that, Yeah. but they didn't really know where you were at in particular is that the same thing you had no no <laughs> you didn't have free reign yeah i mean we're all in the same vicinity i don't know Probably we were not. we were just out in the I, was, I was a good boy brian uh well i, was, I stayed close to my my well my roots my home my parents all right well we, <laughs> we could go down to we had a larger area we could kind of go to like yeah. there's a park and there's other things and okay they weren't with us necessarily and then we'd come yeah. back I would say and, we did that with friends. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, just yeah. kind of hanging out, and then you yeah. come back when, when it's dinner time. Yeah. So, well, here he is. He's, he's traveling. They're traveling with a extended family. And I think it was commonplace that maybe the kids would be with some of the other relatives yeah. in there. Well, they don't realize that, uh, that he's not with them until a day later. <laughs> That's, that'd bring along. Then they're like in Terrible a, parents. Then they're in a panic. They're in a panic, and they go back. And they find him sitting in a temple, much wisdom, much uh, as he's speaking to uh, the, the, you know, the religious leaders mm-hmm. there. And verse 47, all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when it, the takeaway I have for that is I need to take time to listen to Jesus. Cooper's eating everything. He's eating all the electronic equipment <laughs> here. But we're going to take time in our lives to listen to Jesus, right? Cooper, is that the big takeaway? Take time pen, to listen to Jesus, all right? That's our big takeaway. We always have, all of us need to take time to listen to Jesus. There's pens there, yep. You can write with those. Okay, you want, you want to pray for us? Sure. <laughs> there. God, thank you for a beautiful day. Um, we pray for the, the people who are not experiencing a beautiful day right now with the hurricanes. And yeah. I just pray that you would um, give them safety, God. I pray that they would have wisdom to know when to, uh, to flee for shelter and, and when to stay in their own homes. Um, I just pray that you would um, just be with them during this time. Uh, bless the efforts of the people, uh, the cleanup crews and um, the utility companies and everyone who will be involved in the the relief side of this uh, that you would give them strength perseverance and uh, just thank you for uh, their efforts Uh, we thank you for this time this morning 
Uh, we pray that we would um, just have a, an unwavering faith um, that, God, if you have called us and you do call us to pray, that we would do it with full sincerity and um, just a heart for you and uh, for others. Uh, thank you that we have a hope that cannot be taken away from us. You have promised uh, good uh, to those who love you, and uh, we thank you for the promises that um, continue to be fulfilled in our lives, and uh, thank you that, again, we can wait in hopeful expectation of your, your return. And uh, again, just thank you for this time this morning. Be with everyone that's listening. I uh, pray that you would just be with them today. I uh, pray that they would be intentional about their faith and uh, that they would seek to honor you in their words, actions, and deeds. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Cooper, say bye. Bye-bye. Say bye. All done. Dado.